Hi and welcome uh, to Power Electronics. This is week two, and this is the third video segment for our session two in week two. And in this segment, I want to look at DC choppers. Uh, DC choppers are critical. They are uh, what I would call one of the foundational building blocks for power switching. Uh, they're the base for doing our DC to DC converters. They're used for doing uh, simple motor drive circuits. Uh, they can be used to control the intensity of LED lighting systems. Um, you can even use the DC chopper circuit, uh, assuming a pulse width modulation of 50% of on the duty cycle, uh, to do AC conversion. So let's go over the overview of, of what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to split the video in two halves. In the first half, I want to talk about PWM pulse width modulation and how we use that to adjust the average output voltage with a simple DC chopper circuit. And then I want us to design a DC motor drive with forward speed control. And the way we obtain speed control is by adjusting the average output voltage. And hopefully we can do this with five volt logic controlling a, an N channel MOSFET as our switch. And we'll look at how we uh, do some first cuts at looking at the drain to source voltage on our MOSFET and the drain current on our MOSFET. And then we'll check the data, the data sheets for the one I selected. All right, let's look at the theory behind a DC chopper. I'm gonna bring up the whiteboard and uh, let's just assume we have a DC voltage source and I'll call it our supply. And I'm going to assume some resistive load here. And I'm going to place our switch in the low side configuration. Let me put our reference frame there. Let's assume we switch this and it's continuously switching at a frequency of uh, frequency is equal to one over T sub S. The switch is going to be closed for a certain duration and then open. And I would like to say on and off. And so T sub S is equal to T sub on when the switch is closed plus T sub off when the switch is open. And the duty cycle is, is often defined as T sub on divided by T sub switch, the total time. Uh, another way to write this is T sub on divided by T sub on plus T sub off, both will work. If I look at the voltage across the load, and again, we have a resistive load here. It is going to be pulsing with a maximum value of V sub S. And we will obtain an average value output that will be dependent upon the duty cycle. So this time duration is T sub S. And this time is T sub on. So our average output voltage is going to be somewhere around here. We can find the average output across the load. It is equal to 1 over T sub S times the integral from 0 to T sub S times the instantaneous voltage across the load, E. And again, that, that will give us, I'm not going to do the integral here, but V sub out, I'll put it down here as the equation, will be equal to D, our duty cycle, times V sub S. So by chopping the wave, the DC signal, if you will, by chopping it with a finite pulse width, uh, we can vary the average output voltage. If we need higher output voltage, we just keep the switch on longer or close longer and uh, open shorter over that duration. So you've probably seen this derivation before. I hope you have. If not, uh, go ahead and Google this. This is, this is pretty common derivation. Uh, for pulse width modulation. And so now let's turn to designing a, a motor drive using this theory. So in our design problem, we'd like to design a 500 watt 
48 volt DC motor. And I picked that those values because uh, I've always wanted to build an electric bike, an e-bike. Uh, 48 volts uh, motors are fairly common for e-bike hubs. 500 watts is a fairly common uh, size for an e-bike e electric motor hub. Um, so that's, that's where those numbers came from. And what we want to do is design this uh, to be controlled with a five five volt PWM, something that we might find from a microcontroller like an Arduino. Before we pick our MOSFET and go search for a MOSFET, we have to do some preliminary calculations. And I, I first assume that we're going to run this motor with the switch with a duty cycle of uh, approximately 100%. Uh, going as fast as we can, applying all 500 watts. What we want to find is what is the current going to be through the drain? And we can at least make our first estimate as it as ID is going to be the power, 500 watts, divided by the voltage, 48 volts. And that's equal to 10.4 amps. So our, our drain current for whatever MOSFET we have to, we're going to use has to be greater than 10.4 amps. We might want to even double that number to account for current surges. The second thing we want to look at is what is the possible voltage I could have across our switch? And I'm going to call that V drain to source. What is the worst case voltage? If I look at, again, assuming that the switch is is open no current is flowing through the motor that means the complete voltage source of 48 volts will fall across that switch so our vds has to be greater than 48 volts um we're probably going to want to double that again we're always going to size to to be a little bit more conservative and put safety factors in here maybe want to go with an 80 volt or possibly even a 100 volt MOSFET. 50 volts would be cutting it too close. Now there's one thing missing here. And in this design, and if you look, it's right here, we have an inductor. All motors have winding and inductors cannot change in current instantaneously. And so if I would open this switch up, if I open this switch up while current is flowing through, that current has to go somewhere. And uh, we really don't want it going through that FET. It'll it'll put a, a larger voltage than 100 volts across it. So we end up putting in our flyback diode. There's our flyback diode right there. It allows the current to fly back when we open that switch. Don't forget your flyback diodes when you have inductive loads. All right, so we've got I drain has to be greater than 10.4 amps, and we have VDS has to be greater than 48, possibly 100, uh, 100 volts or 48 volts. Here's the MOSFET I think we can use. And if I look at it, we've got a 100 volt MOSFET, which is good. And we've got a drain current of about 40 amps, which is, which is good. Now we have to be very careful with that. Is that average continuous? Is that pulsed? And we're going to look a little bit deeper into, into this MOSFET. Um, one other thing to note on when I was looking at this is what are the applications? Oftentimes the vendors are going to provide you applications. And this is, this is being used for a motor drive switch, so that's good. Um, I think uh, we have to look at a couple more things yet. I want to look, because we're going to drive this with 5 volts, I'm hoping, we got to see, can I drive this with 5 volts and will it be turned on? So let's pull up uh, one more data sheet from this, this MOSFET. And oftentimes in the data sheets, you're going to get, uh, you will get the, the drain current as a function of the drain to source voltage. It's, it's similar to the previous video where we had for the BJT where we looked at the saturation region. They don't necessarily call it the saturation region for MOSFETs. I've seen it referred to as the ohmic region. And unfortunately, this region in here for MOSFETs, don't ask me why, is called the saturation region. Um, I never understood why that was, but I'm sure somebody has a good example or can email me with why that is. So we are going to be switching, uh, 48 volts is way out here. This is called the cutoff, same as the BJT. 
So we're going to be switching from the cutoff region into the ohmic region. And if you look, this one actually shows us having a VGS of 4.5 with an, a drain current of 10 amps. And that was our rough cut calculation. And it has relatively low what's called drain to source resistance. That is the resistance that we find across the switch when it's on. It's sometimes called our conduction resistance. If we look on this curve, drain to source resistance is the inverse of that curve. Well, I also have to look, this has curves for different values of VGS. One of them is four volts, which is this first blue curve right here. And it goes through five, six, seven, all the way up to 10. They're all pretty, pretty bunched together. I, I'm pretty sure then we're going to be able to use a uh, five volt logic to turn this device on based on the data sheet. Now let's look at a couple things. One of the items, and we're gonna go into more detail and I'll talk a little bit about it as we wrap up this video, but it is the total gate charge required to open up the channel, uh, sometimes to turn it on. And if I look at the parameters here in the data sheet, we see that at a gate to source voltage of 4.5, which is a positive gate to source, which will turn the device on, we need a worst case total gate charge of 23 nanocoulombs. And while we've said in the past that the MOSFET is a voltage controlled vice, it is, but really we need charge. So it's, some could think of it as it's a charge control device and we need, and we require for this MOSFET 23 nanocoulombs of total charge to turn it on. So that can cause problem, uh, that can cause problems for microcontrollers. So if I look at just the, here's our gate, here's our source, here's our drain. If I look at the gate to source junction, I can model that as a capacitor. If I try to put five volts and change that value instantaneously, it's going to require a lot of current. A high level of current is going to be required to change the gate to source voltage when we try to switch it on. That can cause problems if there is lead inductance, it can cause ringing, and that ringing can turn the switch on and off. Re recall that if I have an inductor and a capacitor and I switch that on, I have an under damp system that will cause voltage oscillations and current oscillations. So it is very common to put some damping resistance in line, I'll call that R sub G, in line with the gate. It is also common to sometimes tie that down with say a 10K to one meg ohm resistor to just bleed off any noise or give you a path to, to close that. The gate is sometimes on the order of one ohm up to 10 ohms, possibly even 50 ohms. So let's recap this video or the key points of this video. Um, the first one was the PWM duty cycle determines our average output for the DC chopper. Our average output V out is equal to the duty cycle times our input DC value V sub S, our supply value. We need to check the gate to source voltage on the MOSFET so that it can handle that on state and off state. Um, and another important design consideration with selecting a MOSFET is what is the total gate charge? We didn't really go over it in too much detail here. We talked about it, but it's going to be very important as we continue on. on. It's also going to determine how fast the MOSFET will be able to turn on and how fast we can turn it off. So that gate charge becomes a, a critical uh, parameter as well. Thanks for watching the video.